A good workout split should accomplish two things. First, it should train each muscle group with adequate frequency to result in muscle growth. And second, it should allow your muscles to recover between sessions. You see, a good workout split must have a good balance of training and recovery, which is why most people gravitate toward pre-built workout splits like the ones touted by bodybuilders and fitness influencers. But the truth is, there is no best split. If there was, we'd all be doing it. What's important is that you find a workout split you enjoy that fits your goals and lifestyle, and in turn, this will help you stay consistent with your workouts. That said, there are some tried and true workout splits that tick all of the boxes and will fit most people's goals and lifestyle. So if you're not sure how to split your training for optimal results in the gym, then listen up, because I'm gonna narrow it down to the top three workout splits for muscle growth so you can make an informed decision and walk into the gym confident that you're following a solid plan. Workout split number one, full body. The full body routine is a popular split among beginners as it allows you to train all muscle groups in one session, mainly focusing on compound exercises like the bench press, deadlifts, and squats. Furthermore, a full body routine can help you practice the main compound lifts more frequently so you can improve your coordination and build a base level of strength. For example, if you squat twice per week, your technique and strength will likely improve faster compared to squatting once per week. Additionally, because you're spreading your volume across the week, you're more likely to recover faster, experience less overall fatigue, and avoid excessive soreness, which is most common among beginners. Therefore, by recovering faster, you can push yourself harder in each session, resulting in more muscle growth over time. Not to mention you won't have to worry about DOMS affecting your daily routine as much. We've all felt the struggle of training legs too hard and not being able to do basic things like sitting on the toilet or going up the stairs. Even if you're not a beginner, a full body workout split can be a great option for you. One of the biggest upsides of this split is that it naturally increases your training frequency, which has been shown to result in more muscle growth. According to a systematic review and meta-analysis by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, when volume is matched, training each muscle twice per week results in significantly greater muscle growth than training each muscle just once per week. Another advantage of a high-frequency workout split is that you have more spikes in muscle protein synthesis. Without going into too much detail, research shows that muscle protein synthesis remains elevated for approximately 48 to 72 hours after training in beginners, but only 24 hours in more experienced lifters. Therefore, if you're a beginner, you can get great results with just three sessions per week, whereas someone with more training experience may need to train the same muscle group more frequently to see good results. However, it's worth noting that an increase in muscle protein synthesis does not correlate to more muscle growth over time. It's more complex than that. For example, we mustn't forget that muscle growth is a direct result of muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. At the end of the day, we know based on current literature that training a muscle group twice per week is better than one time, but anything beyond twice per week may not lead to significant muscle growth. Something else to keep in mind is that you can use higher frequency training as a tool to spread your weekly volume, which could improve the quality of your sets and lead to an increase in performance, thus resulting in more gains over time. For example, smaller muscles like the biceps or side delts recover faster than bigger muscles like the hamstrings or chest. You can take advantage of this and train those smaller muscles more frequently, which could lead to more growth. So those are some of the pros of a full body routine. What about the cons? For starters, training each muscle group in one session can be taxing, especially if you're doing heavy squats or deadlifts. These compound lifts can be demanding from a physical and mental perspective. Having said that, some people might find training more enjoyable by doing legs on a separate day. On another note, if you're doing more than three full body sessions per week, you may not have much time for recovery in between sessions, which could lead to more soreness and fatigue. Another potential concern with a high frequency routine is joint overuse. For example, if you deadlift on one day and do Romanian deadlifts on the next, you might run into some recovery problems. Nevertheless, these cons should only concern more advanced trainees as beginners shouldn't experience any of these issues with only three sessions per week, assuming that they're resting at least 24 hours between sessions. Furthermore, with proper exercise selection, spreading weekly volume throughout sessions, and fatigue management, it's possible to circumvent a lot of these potential concerns for more experienced lifters. Workout split number two, upper-lower. The upper-lower split is a classic workout split that works for anyone, regardless of their training experience. This split has you in the gym either four or six days per week, alternating between upper body and lower body workouts. One of the perks of this split is that you can prioritize different muscle groups in each session, depending on what muscle groups you wanna focus on. For example, if you're training four times per week, 
One upper body session could focus more on your chest and back with one or two exercises on the arms and shoulders, whereas the other upper body session could focus more on the arms and shoulders with one or two chest and back exercises. One of the biggest advantages of this split is that it's very simple and effective, making it a great alternative to the full body split if you're a beginner and have the flexibility to train four times per week. It's also a good alternative for anyone who prefers training legs on a separate day. Another upside is that you can use this split as a beginner and adapt it as you get more training experience. For example, as you become more experienced, you may require more training volume to progress. In this case, you could simply increase your training frequency from four to six times per week for a seamless transition. Regardless of the cons of this workout split, here are some of our main concerns with it. Not every muscle group responds the same. For example, your chest and back might grow really well on an upper lower split because you can train them hard and they'll recover nicely before your next session. However, smaller muscles like your biceps and shoulders may recover faster and may require more volume to grow. This can be especially relevant if you usually train arms or shoulders at the end of your upper body session and you're already too fatigued to push yourself with adequate intensity for muscle growth. Given that advanced lifters tend to require more volume to grow, you might find that over time, you need to do a lot of exercises on a single upper body workout, which may become fatiguing. If this is the case, you should consider adding an extra day to help spread out your weekly training volume. Workout split number three, push, pull, legs. The push-pull leg split is another popular split, often used by intermediate and advanced lifters looking to increase their training volume to break a strength or size plateau. In this split, muscles are divided into three categories. Push, where you train all upper body pushing muscles like your chest, triceps, and front delts. Pull, where you train all upper body pulling muscles like your back, biceps, and rear delts. And legs, where you train all lower body muscles like your quads, hamstrings, glutes, and calves. As for muscles like abs or side delts, you can fit them in on any day according to your preference. Although this split can be done three times per week, it's generally recommended that you do it six times per week so you can train each muscle group twice. Despite the current evidence suggesting that training frequency may not matter as much for muscle growth if total volume is equated, it's still a good idea to spread out your sets throughout the week. The main reason behind doing this is that you want to avoid doing all of your weekly volume in one session, as this will likely lead to lower quality sets as you start to fatigue after the first couple of exercises. For example, imagine doing 20 sets of chest in one workout versus doing 10 sets across two workouts. You'd probably be able to push yourself harder if you only had to do 10 sets per workout, and you won't have to deal with excessive soreness for the rest of the week. As such, here are some of the pros of this workout split. You can dedicate more time to your upper body by splitting it into two sessions. Instead of training your whole upper body in one session, you can focus more on specific muscle groups like your chest and triceps on one day and back and biceps on the other day. On top of that, because you're hitting every muscle group twice, you can train hard with higher volumes and still recover nicely. Workouts don't interfere with each other. For example, on an upper lower split, you might do barbell rows on your upper body day and then do squats or deadlifts on the lower body day, but find that your lower back might still be a bit fatigued from doing barbell rows. With a push-pull leg split, you can minimize this, especially if you rearrange the split into a push-legs-pull or a legs-push-pull. Another example is that even if you go too hard on any given session, for example, chest, delts, and triceps, you can still effectively train your back and biceps because they'll be fresh and ready to go. Some cons of this workout split include, similar to the upper body split, not all push or pull muscles heal at the same rate. For example, bigger muscle groups typically take longer to heal, whereas smaller muscle groups heal faster. If you're arbitrarily waiting to train a muscle group when it's already fully recovered, you may be leaving some gains on the table. This split works best when done six times per week, which can be too much of a time commitment for a lot of people. You only rest one day per week, which may not be enough to fully recover, especially if you have a stressful or active lifestyle. Depending on how you structure your rest days, this split may not suit your schedule. For example, if you want to keep a consistent schedule, you could do all six sessions in a row, but this could lead to accumulated fatigue, especially in the last workouts of the week. However, if you choose to rest every three days after completing one push, pull, and legs workout, your workouts and rest day will fall on different days each week. This may not be an issue for some, but it could be a deal breaker for others. The good news is that you don't have to stick to the same training split forever, and you can change your split based on your current goals and individual needs. For example, if you currently have more free time and would like to try out a push-pull legs routine, go for it. But if you're more experienced and your main goal is to maintain your physique, then you might only need three sessions per week to maintain your strength and muscle mass. Remember, workout splits aren't magical. You should do what you enjoy as this will help you stay consistent with training and push harder when you're in the gym. Now that we've gone over the three workout splits for muscle growth, let's discuss some other factors you must consider. Let's start with your goals. 
Your workout split should be realistic, enjoyable, and flexible. If you don't like full body workouts, don't do them. If you only have three days per week to train, then don't even think about a program that requires you to go to the gym four to five times a week. Some of us don't have as much time to train. Some days you might have to squeeze in a session during your lunch break, while other days you might have more time to train. Your training plan should reflect that. One of the biggest mistakes people make in the fitness space is getting too caught up on what's optimal. Optimal is not the same for everyone, and it's a moving target. What's optimal for a 20-something year old version of you might be a whole lot different for your 40-year-old self. Now that's a lot to unpack and you're probably wondering what's the right split for you. So let's wrap up the video with a quick recap and some practical recommendations. If you're a beginner, we recommend starting with a full body routine three times per week or an upper lower routine four times per week, focusing mainly on compound lifts as these will give you more bang for your buck, both strength and size wise. If you're an intermediate or advanced lifter, here are some options for you. Full body split three to five times per week, upper lower split four to six times per week, push pull leg split six times per week. You may also customize your workout split according to your goals. For example, a legs push pull lower upper split is a great way to train each muscle group twice per week and you'll only need to go to the gym five times instead of six. Before you customize your split, here is what a good split should accomplish. Adherence. Does it fit into your schedule? Weekly and monthly progression. Adequate volume for progress. Appropriate training intensity for muscle growth. If you're new to the gym, start with a pre-built workout split. Once you're more experienced, you can customize your split. As long as you're ticking all the boxes, you're good. Lastly, here are some guidelines that will help you decide what's right for you. Whatever split you choose, make sure you train each muscle group twice per week to maximize strength and size gains. If you're a beginner, start with a full body workout split three times per week. This will help you practice compound lifts and build muscle and strength more effectively without causing excessive fatigue. Don't choose the split you think is optimal. Every split has pros and cons. Choose the split you can be the most consistent with as this will lead to better long-term results. Now that being said, here's a quick recap of the pros and cons of each split discussed in this video. The full body split can be done three to five times per week, and it's a great choice for beginners all the way to advanced lifters as it naturally increases training frequency, which can lead to more quality sets throughout the week and higher total weekly volume. However, not everyone enjoys training full body, and for more advanced lifters training four to six times per week, this routine can potentially impair recovery, especially if done with high intensity and a lot of volume. The upper lower split can be done four to six times per week and is a great choice for anyone. It's a simple and effective routine and you can scale it from four times to six times per week, should you need to increase your training volume. The biggest downside is not all muscles heal at the same rate and smaller muscle groups like the biceps and shoulders may lag behind over time. Another downside is that your upper body sessions may be too long as you get more advanced and doing all of your heavy compound lifts in one session can be quite fatiguing. Lastly, the push-pull leg split is a great choice for intermediate and advanced lifters, and although you can do it three times a week, it's recommended to do it six times per week for optimal gains. This split allows you to train hard with higher volumes and recover nicely. However, six days a week in the gym may be too much of a time commitment for some, and only resting one day per week may not be sufficient to recover from your workouts, especially if you live an active lifestyle. Similar to the upper lower split, smaller muscle groups may lag behind if you only train them twice per week. So you may want to sprinkle in some additional volume as needed. For example, adding some lateral raises or arm work on leg day can be an effective way to increase volume for lagging body parts without adding extra fatigue. Just don't use this as an excuse to skip leg day. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter whose muscle gains have stalled and are looking to jumpstart new muscle growth, grab a copy of our brand new program, Mass 5 Full Body. This is a high frequency full body workout for intermediate and advanced lifters who are looking to take their physique to the next level. And right now you can get an additional 25% off by using coupon code MASS25. If you wanna learn more, click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.